Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper and I'm reshooting the audio track for some of the video I shot this weekend at the retreat location. We hooked up some of the other options on the TSMPP-60 charge controller. The first thing we hooked up here was the remote battery voltage sense marked with the blue arrow. Then we added the remote temperature sensor which is also connected to the battery. And then we added the Ethernet connection to the router out at the retreat location to give us internet access to the charge controller. And then we added an RJ11 cable for the front panel display that we added, the TS-M-2 display. And this gives us a local display of how the batteries and the charge controller and the PV array are all working together. And with the internet connection, we can now browse remotely and check on the health and status of off-grid solar power system I have out there at the retreat location. So here is a screenshot recording of my laptop computer from this afternoon. We're actually putting in the IP address to access the system remotely out in West Virginia. I'm here in Virginia. And this is called Live View. And this is going to give us a data display of the battery, the array, the temperatures, uh, amp hours produced, and any alarms or any faults that the system has. We can see that the batteries are 28 degrees Celsius. It was in the float mode, putting out 13.11 volts. Okay, now we'll be able to look at the network configuration. And this is the local network configuration, not the wide area network or the remote IP addresses. I actually grade those out because I don't want people hacking the system after watching the video. And here it actually shows where dip switch 8 is in the off position. So this disables anybody from remotely reprogramming the unit through the internet or hacking the system. So this is the basic network configuration. And then we can look at the data log. Now for data, I only captured the last five days on this system, but this gives you a good representation of how your system is doing over a period of time. And I'm gonna to try to show this here by putting in a red arrow showing the last five days that we captured. Wait for that to pop up. There it is there. So that was starting Sunday and you can actually see here we're looking at equalization of float voltages absorption below of course battery temperature for the past five days the max battery voltage and here I'm showing the 15.4 volts that was equalization that we performed last Sunday and then the typical absorption rate during the day of 14.8 volts so this allows you to see what your charge controller is up to again we're doing this remotely through the internet so I'm seeing this live, or at the time I recorded it, uh, how the system's doing out in West Virginia. And that's one of the great benefits of the TriStar MPPT charge controller, is the ability to remotely monitor your off-grid system. Now I'm opening up the application called MS View. We're going to go ahead and do a manual configuration here. We're going to use the internet protocol. I'm going to put in the IP address for my system out in West Virginia, and we'll actually get the MS View program to connect to the charge controller out in West Virginia. 5400 is the custom port we installed. So we can actually expand the different things we can record. We're going to go ahead and connect. And you know you're connected to the system when the little icon turns from red to green. And you'll see that momentarily. There we go, it's green. And now I'll do another video on this, but you can pull all this data here into different displays to see how your system's been performing. This is all your logging that you set up. Now we're going to go ahead and actually use the setup wizard and I'm going to read the configuration out of the charge controller. I can't program because dip switch 8 is in the off position, but if you were helping somebody out, you could actually go out and read their configuration, tweak it, and if they're at the local position, they could enable that dip switch and let you program that. But here we're going to show you where we actually set up the custom ports and then we opened up the firewall on the router, which allows me to do this remotely and we're coming up on that page now so here you go this is where I set the static IP address for the local area network and then configured custom port numbers for remote access and then I opened up those ports on my router to allow computers from outside the network to tunnel through the router and connect internally so now we're going to roll over to some video that actually worked from this weekend and wrap this video up and my iPhone is connected to the charge controller remotely through the internet. So remotely with my iPhone, I can check the status of my solar system anywhere as long as I have internet connectivity here at the retreat location and of course internet connectivity with the cell phone. 
and of course cell phone time down on us. Now, important thing to do here is once you get this all set up and everything's programmed where you want it and you enable the ethernet option, you have to remember to go back into the charge controller and set that dip switch 8 to off, which prohibits people from reprogramming your charge controller remotely over the ethernet cable. And I'll insert a screenshot to point at that dip switch. And then of course, once you change the dip switch, you have to disconnect the 12 volts from the system and reconnect it so the charge controller reboots and loads all the new parameters. So that wraps up this weekend's trip at the retreat location. We went ahead and got the panel installed, all the remote features installed, the temperature sense, the voltage sense, and of course the ethernet connected to the router. And we've tested things out and it seems to be working great. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prep with a continuation in the playlist video series on Morningstar's TS MPPT60 charge controller and making the final connections and installing the faceplate with the meter on it. Thanks for watching guys.